This is the Satin Lounge, where we celebrate diversity, innovation, and creativity. Tonight's Pillow Talk guest is a Toronto freelance entertainment journalist and an innovator in broadcasting. He's contributed to more than his fair share of online and print publications. He's contributed regularly to Hello Canada, the top-selling Canadian magazine on newsstands, um, the CTV National News Channel, the National Post, the Los Angeles Times, TV Guide USA, TVGuide.com, Out, OK, and In Magazines and Entertainment Tonight, to name a few. He's a producer at City TV's Breakfast Television and recently helped launch the Marilyn Dennis Show on CTV as its managing show writer. But wait, there's more. We can't forget about Soap Expert. Uh, For over five years now, he's spearheaded the soap coverage for uh, TV Guide Canada, uh, the popular and... uh, Controversial daytime TV hub. Sat Lounge, please help me welcome the bad boy of journalism, Nelson Branco. Hello, sir. Hello, you sexy bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I love your voice. It's so nice to speak to you. I've listened to several of your, several of your podcasts and um, I have to say, you get me going in all oh, dirty you ways. Get, you're I getting all it. moist over there, Nelson. <laughs> I'm um, there is not a dry seat in my house. Well, I the, love uh, that. I love that. Having this uh, chapelle on, um, <laughs> I love. Uh, she's pretty sexy. Yeah, she's pretty sexy. She does that to people um, all over the world, as far as I can tell. One of the most gorgeous stunning. Women yes, she in is. The world. <laughs> You know what? Bad boy is a good description for you, I think. Or, or would you prefer naughty? Either or. You know, I just live my life. I yes, tell you the do. truth. I have fun. I don't think we're curing cancer. <laughs> I'm a good, kind person. <laughs> I'm not nice because you can't be honest and nice at the same time. You can't um, be nice. Yeah. But I'm a kind and uh, thoughtful person. But, you know, it's uh, this industry, especially the soap opera world, the yes. one I came into the soap opera world, or re-entered the soap opera world maybe six, seven years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, there was so much censorship in this industry, and I came from the mainstream world, so I thought, like, you know, soaps want to be treated like, you know, the mainstream mm-hmm. world, and I'm going to treat them like the mainstream world, and I'm going to... Uh, give them what they say they want. Raw, they unapologetic, it. candid. They rejected it at yeah. first. And, and, uh, <laughs> but then, you know, I think I, I've helped uh, pave the way to what is happening now. And it's so they've had to take responsibility for what they've done. And I've also, you know, acclaimed them in, in the same way by doing Sexiest Woman Alive and, mm-hmm. you know, really um, putting their talent on display, um, but also making them accountable for the decisions they make. Um, mm-hmm. I started in the soap class when I was like 22 and I remember, you know, you if you wrote anything bad, they wouldn't let you on the set. And that doesn't happen in the mainstream world. I mean, no, you it follow happen. Michael Osiello at TV Line or, you know, Entertainment Tonight. I mean, they they leak stuff, casting spoilers and, you know, they, they report on people's antics. And mm-hmm. uh, But so the soap world has been a very protected one for a long time. And uh, You blew the lid off of that when... <laughs> People have to wear rubber suits around you these days. <laughs> yeah, it's a lonely life, really. It is all yeah. good. I, I appreciate your candor and, you know, that you, you do what you, you stay true to what you feel you should stay true to. What I found more intriguing about you is that this is, you know, journalism and broadcasting is not just some hobby that you picked up somewhere. I mean, you actually have a degree in radio and television. You know, what is it about journalism that you love? I got a radio and TV arts degree, the most prestigious university in Canada, Mm -hmm. uh, because I wanted to be a director and producer. And I just, I'd always written, Mimi Torshin hired me um, as an intern when I was in university and had written about me even when I was in high school Mm -hmm. and printed my reader uh, mail uh, long before that. And I, I minored in journalism, but I kind of fell in love with journalism, you know, um, accidentally, and I kind of pursued that, and it's just been in the last five years that I've really um, decided to walk the talk because I've criticized everyone in television. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? As a journalist, maybe it's a really good idea if I enter the TV fray. Mm-hmm. So the last five years, I've become head writer at the Maryland Dennis Show at 
uh, which you just previously mm -hmm. uh, mentioned. And then, um, you know, I've become a writer and editor at CTV National News Channel, mm -hmm. um, Sun News Network, City TV. So I, I'm, I have one foot in the print world, one foot in the TV world. So it's, I guess, as a Gemini, I, I like, you know, uh, being in, involved in, in more than one industry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm slightly ADD. Um, working behind the scenes in TV, it makes me understand a lot more of what people in soaps, uh, you know, deal with. The whole, you know, arduous process of trying to make art in a team sport. Right. Whereas writing, I just sit down by my computer and write whatever I goddamn want. Whatever. And I deal with editors and, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and publicists and actors' egos. But usually it's, it's pretty much a uh, solitary act. Well, what is what attracts you to soap? Because you you have the skill to, and you have worked in all kinds of genres. You know, mainstream uh, television. You know, what is it about soaps? Well, I know it's like you know I have uh, all my editors and producers are so ashamed. I'm like this little big <laughs> soap opera, you know, pundit. But you know, I. I stand steadfast and I, I mm -hmm. claim my soap opera power because so go back power. to Charles Dickens. I think from the, the the beginning of time, if you look at the Egyptians and carving out their stories and in, in you know the pyramids, I mm -hmm. mean, we all we do the only thing we're, that humans that connect humans is storytelling. Right. Oh, that's and our story that's never rich. ends. Mm -hmm. And soap operas, you know, do that better than anything. I mean. You know, Charles Dickens wrote soap operas. Um, mm -hmm. You know, all of primetime television is now soap opera. I mean, remember in the 80s and even early 90s, there were like a beginning, middle, and end to yes. primetime shows and comedies. Mm -hmm. Comedies now are soap operas. This there is, is mm -hmm. So I think that's what ties human beings together. And I'm amazed um, and inspired uh, by this genre because the story never ends. We're all learning and growing. And I find that really fascinating. It inspires me and engages me mm -hmm. and growing up as you know a disenfranchised gay teen and mm -hmm. kind of an impoverished prairie town i saw something wonderful that spoke to me and it helped me get over the hard times mm -hmm. and um i think this genre has spoken to a lot of disenfranchised mm -hmm. people over the years, um, the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s that really, you yeah. know, told continuing uh, storylines. And I also connected with the genre because this was a, a genre built by women for women. Mm -hmm. They made all the money for the networks because advertisers only wanted to reach women, which they were right. home during the day. Right. So they paid the networks all this money to reach those women, you know, the Tide commercials, etc. And... The networks, the patriarchal networks, took all that money and threw it at Monday Night Football. So it was a great, like, metaphor for what was happening in society. So that always, that also pricked me in, mm -hmm. in like, such a journalistic way for what was happening in society. You know, it's a, there's a myriad of reasons yeah. why. Being such a long-time soap enthusiast, how did you react when you saw, you know, this genre dwindling away? Well, I mean, I was one of the first people to shout and scream that it was going to go away because I knew there were people in place and I reported it, I think, before mm -hmm. anyone else that, you know, and the industry rejected me and they didn't like me for saying it. And, you know, I ended up, unfortunately, I ended up right. But mm -hmm. uh, it was still devastating when, you know, especially when my favorite soap opera one like, was canceled um, two years ago. Uh, you know, fortunately, we won that fight and we brought them back. So, yes. Um, but it began with Guiding Light. I mean, Guiding Light was um, a soap opera that. Guiding Light was probably. I, I'm I'm new, kind of new to the, the soap arena. Uh, Guiding Light was one of the soaps that I really kind of got into. And it seemed that as soon as I got into it, it, it canceled. It was kind of devastating for me. I was <laughs> it's like, all your fault. I know. <laughs> I was the kind of uh, soap fan that would come back every 10 years and see what's going on and it seemed like some of the stories were the same to me until all of a sudden I saw some LGBT content and I think that kind of kept my attention for a little while. Well, you know, that was just like, you know, uh, one of those stories that journalists love to tackle. It was mm -hmm. like, and, and many critics, including myself, wanted the show to be canceled because it was just um, for a long time, even before the Italia storyline, it was just, they mm -hmm. were just purposely trying to kill the show and dumb it down and, you know, film it like on back alleys and, mm -hmm. you know, actors have to change clothes and cars.